President of the United States. Admiral, Captain, gentlemen, I want to express on behalf of the members of the Congress, the ambassadors from many countries, on behalf of myself, I think the people of the United States, uh, great appreciation to you, both of your efforts today, your efforts on other days and nights, in the spring and in winter and in summer. The United States Navy helped secure the freedom of countries a thousands of miles away, ships which uh, sail hundreds of miles from coast to far off places, preserve the freedom of those countries. And therefore, as a former member of the United States Navy, and now as President, I want to express to you our heartfelt appreciation. I hope you realize the contribution that you're making, not only to the preservation of the peace, but the preservation of the freedom of this country, and the over 50 countries which are allied with us, and others which, while not allied, benefit from our strength. What you have shown us today, the ships, the techniques, and most of all, your own skill and courage, makes all of us return to the capital with a good deal more confidence and hope. arrives at Oceana, Virginia to visit the Atlantic fleet. Only now, he comes not as a naval officer, but as the 35th President of the United States and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. The President's party first visits headquarters of the Supreme Allied Commander, Atlantic, Admiral Robert L. Dennison. Here, President Kennedy meets officers of the NATO nations who share in the security of the vital Atlantic Sea frontiers. On this, his first official visit to the fleet, President Kennedy is accompanied by the Vice President, Lyndon Johnson. Over the next 24 hours, the presidential party, members of Congress, and ambassadors and diplomatic guests from 56 nations will witness at sea and ashore the operations of the men, ships, and planes of the Navy. nerve center of the Atlantic NATO Command is Operations Control Center. Here, in the event of war, would come the orders sending into action the seagoing forces of 14 nations as one Navy. One such ship would be the Thomas A. Edison, newest of the Polaris submarines. In Norfolk, the Edison waits the President's arrival. Within weeks, this submarine will join the Polaris fleet already deployed on patrol. Armed with 16 Polaris missiles, she will add substantially to the free world's ability to deter war and prevent aggression. While President Kennedy scans the harbor through one of Edison's periscopes, Vice President Johnson arrives aboard the attack carrier Forrestal.
cruiser Northampton, a flagship of the Atlantic Fleet, mans the rail for the Commander-in-Chief. Emergency, Northampton could serve as the President's mobile command post at sea, one of several nerve centers from which he and his staff could transmit command decisions. good today. If for some reason we had to divert to the beach, there are plenty of alternate fields along the coast that you can get into. We're operating just south of Cherry Point here. We have a master jet base here, Cherry Point. Uh, Hunter Air Force Base here at Savannah has runways that can take the vigilante. Are there any questions from anyone? Pilots and air crewmen have an opportunity to be ambassadors themselves. They've visited many nations, but seldom has there been the opportunity to reciprocate at sea. The uh, Chargé d'Affaires of the Republic of Mali. Yes. Of Western Africa. Western Africa, yes. yes. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am the ambassador of Honduras. Oh, si. Sí. Tengo mucho gusto. Tengo mucho gusto. Muchas gracias. I just speak Spanish. Un poquito. <laughs> This is my bombardier, Lieutenant Nero. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Davila. I am from Chegucialpa, the capital of Honduras. Very I am representing my country, your great country, United States. It's my pleasure to meet you, sir. Yes. Senator Byrd, I'm Commander Heath. Uh, it's a pleasure to know you, sir. Honor to have you aboard. This is my bombardier, Lieutenant Larry Monroe. Pleased to meet you, sir. Is this, uh, is this your first visit with us aboard the Enterprise? Yes, yeah, first time for the Enterprise. I'm very proud of the fact it was built in Virginia. I'm one of those that believes in airplane carriers. Well, of course, I'm very glad to hear you say that, sir. Breakfast, a good chance to meet constituents. and ceremonies by the fleet. Nowadays, fleets are widely dispersed across thousands of miles of ocean. This is a rare sight. Among ships saluting the president, the largest in the world, the Enterprise. destroyers. Guided missile destroyers, frigates, cruisers, and the first nuclear-powered surface ship the USS Long Beach, amphibious assault ships, and their Marines. Proud, dedicated men, proud ships, an answer to the President's question. Piped aboard the Big E,
anti-submarine rockets are ready. An S-2F tracker is launched. Carrier helicopters also play an important role on the sub-hunting team. Submarines, such as the nuclear-powered Thresher, seek out their own kind in the depths of the sea. A land-based P2V Neptune starts the show. Teamwork, skill, and courage are essential ingredients in this, the most exacting of naval arts. For anti-submarine warfare today is advancing rapidly on all fronts with improved tactics and new equipment to find and destroy the elusive submarine. Typical of these weapons is ASRA, a sub-killing missile. submarine's traditional enemy is the destroyer. These high-speed sub-hunters remain one of the most effective challenges to submarines threatening our sea lines of communication. Carrier surface-to-air missiles are fired at a drone. Enterprise and Forrestal now turn into the wind to launch aircraft. Each of these floating airfields has a sphere of influence many hundreds of miles in diameter. Spheres of influence which can be moved where needed, when needed. There are no fixed addresses in the fleet. A demonstration of fleet air firepower by high-performance jet aircraft. The Navy's newest and hottest, the F-4H Phantom. J. Vigilante, attack bomber of tomorrow.
Within minutes, the four-acre flight deck is empty. are visible evidence of how carrier aircraft support directly amphibious forces over the beach or other combat troops farther inland. June, North Carolina. Here, hard-hitting, battle-ready units armed with the latest weapons are prepared to go into combat at any level of the wide spectrum of nuclear or limited warfare. Nearby, at Onslow Beach, the president is joined by the Shah of Iran in the United States on a state visit.
land the landing force. Now land the landing force. aircraft are essential for close air support of amphibious landings. The planes you see here are manned by Marines. The president now leaves for Bogue Field, where he and his guests will inspect a new Marine Corps development, the Short Airfield, for tactical support. Equipment similar to carrier catapults and arresting gear is used to handle Marine aircraft engaged in support of the ground forces. This prefabricated short airstrip can be built in very little time. Turboprop transports can airlift tons of supplies into and out of such airstrips. Thus, 
After participating in 24 hours of continuous fleet operations, President Kennedy leaves for Washington and the affairs of state. For the men of the Navy and Marine Corps, the exercise has been a brief but eventful interlude in a demanding schedule. As they return to their jobs, as they shoulder individually the heavy, often lonely responsibility of preserving the peace, they do so assured of the support and confidence of their president and the 180 million people he represents. For it was John F. Kennedy who said on completing his review of the Navy Marine Corps team, as we leave the fleet today, we are prouder than ever that we are citizens of the United States and supporters of these men who serve us so well. Thank you. 